Right, it's time to make these lovely flowers. Now, as we're making two, I've already made one to show you what they look like when they're done. Um, deceptively simple. We've done a lot of picots already, so that edge you will be completely fine with. Um, like I said, deceptively simple. There's a couple of colour changes in here which are worked in an interesting way that you may not have seen before, may not have used before. So we'll show you that as well. Um, the flower is going to be made into that chain space that you made um, in that little sort of um, bud section um, and it's going to be worked in rows this backwards and forwards so you're going to be working right sides and wrong sides. I've worked mine in the original colourway which is copper, uh, blush and caramel so any three colours that you choose are fine um, so let's get going. Okay, I'm starting with copper for row one and I'm starting in the chain space or we're going to be working into that chain space and I'm going to start with three chain which will count as my treble. So to secure that I'll put my hook through, pull up a loop and I'm going to take the cut yarn and put over the top of the working yarn and then when I make the first chain that sort of holds it nice and securely it's less uh, loose. So one, two and three and that counts as my first stitch. Okay so we're going to now make a treble into the same space and I'm going to work over my end as well just to try and be a bit efficient here and I'm then going to make one chain and we're just going to do a repeat of two treble one chain three times. All in, the, all in the same space. So two treble, UK terminology obviously. One chain, that's once. Two treble. One chain, that's twice. Two, oops. two treble, one chain, that is three times, okay? And I'm just going to finish by putting two treble into that space and again, working over that end. But on the last treble, so on the second of those last two trebles, I'm not gonna finish the stitch, I'm gonna wait. When there's two loops on my hook, I'm going to trim my yarn and I'm gonna change color or change yarn color to um, blush. Okay, so all I'm going to do is take the yarn and pull it through the last two loops. So I've completed the stitch with a new coloured yarn. Now, it is a little bit loose and there are a couple of ends here, but don't worry, as you work, it will tighten up. I'm going to turn my work, so carefully sort of turn the whole thing over. And we are now ready to make round, two, sorry, row two. We're looking at the wrong side. We're working the wrong side on round two and we're working with this new yarn color, which in my case is blush. So we'll make three chain, one, two, three. And in this case, that counts as our first stitch. I'm gonna put a treble into the base of the stitch where the, where the chains are coming out. Two treble into the uh, next stitch. One chain. I will skip the chain that we made on the previous round. Then two treble into each of the next two stitches. So that's going to be our pattern here. So that's one stitch, that's two stitch, and then one chain. All right, so that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to miss all the chains out from the previous round and put two trebles into each treble from the previous round. Okay, so I'll just do that, get to the end. Okay, so on these last two stitches, okay, we're just going to put just as we have done before, two trebles into each of them. Now the last one is a bit tricky to see because it was the joining, uh, the starting chain from the previous round, but it is there. And again, on that last treble, 
do not complete the stitch leave two loops on the hook snip that yarn and we will change yarn colour to in my case caramel by pulling through in the same way that we just did by pulling through those two loops same as before a little bit loose to start with but it works up absolutely fine and again I'm going to turn the work turn everything over and we're back to working the right side here okay so when we're we're now on round three three chain again which do, does count as a stitch two and three and we are going to put um, two treble into each of the next two stitches. So not the one at the base of the chain this time, the next two stitches. One, so two chain, sorry, two treble into each of the next two stitches. That's one, and that's the second one. And then one treble into the next stitch. Okay, so if you look, we've got one, two, two, one. That's what we're going to be doing across the piece here, just fanning that uh, flower out really nicely. We're going to make a chain, skip the tre uh, sorry, skip the chain from the round before, and do that again. So one, two, two, one, and that's all we're going to do again all the way across. So one, two, two, one, and one chain to skip. Okay, I'm on the last little cluster now. One, whoops. Two. Two. And one. And this time we're not changing colour, we're going to stay in this colour because we're going to complete that lovely flower with a frilly pico edge. So just turn that. We are now back on the wrong side. And we're like I said, we will finish this flower with pico edge. So let's see how we do that on round four. So to start with, we're not making a chain, okay? So we obviously normally make a turning chain, don't we? We're not going to be doing that this time. We're going to slip stitch into the stitch at the base of the hook. So in there, make a slip stitch. Okay, and then we are going to slip stitch into each of the next two stitches. So we've got three slip stitches in total to begin with. One, two, and three. Okay, and now we're going to make a pico, and, and we've made loads of them. We've just made them on the leaves, haven't we? So you know how to do them. It's done in the same way. So three chain, and just slip stitch into that slip stitch at the base. Okay, so there's our first little pico. I'm going to do that again. So slip stitch twice. Just be careful when you come back in with a slip stitch after a pico because it's really easy to rework the stitch. So just pay attention to that. So there's our second pico. Okay, and then we'll make, and the last stitch of each group will just make a slip stitch. Okay. One chain. And we're going to skip the chain space from round before. Slip stitch into the next stitch and make our first pico. So this is um, slightly different in that we're picoing into the first stitch, whereas at the very beginning we didn't do that. But here we are doing that. OK, so we've made a uh, pico into the first slip stitch. OK. Um, and we're now going to go back and do two slip stitches again and another pico so we're basically doing a pico at this point every second slip stitch okay and each petal you should get one two you should get three picos per petal apart from the first and the last petals but follow your pattern it will be really 
intuitive. So that's what we've got. If you look at the beginning, we've got that longer period of slip stitches with just two picots, and then our regular repeat will give us three per flower. So I'm going to finish that, and then on the end flower, we'll go back to the two, but I'll show you that when we, sorry, on the end petal, we'll go back to the, or end, end part of the petal, we'll go back to two, let me show you. So I'm just going to work that repeat. Okay, so on the um, three center sections of the flower, three center petals, let's call them that, you will have, as I said, three picots, and you will end each uh, section with one slip stitch. You should have one stitch left when you've worked your picots on each of those sections just to put a slip stitch in the end. Then you're going to do your one chain. Now I'm on my last petal now, so this is slightly different. Start in the same way with a slip stitch and a pico, and then I'll do my two slip stitch and a second pico, two, three, and that should leave me with three stitches to slip stitch into one, and it does, two, albeit the third being the chain. Okay, so that is our beautiful carnation. So let me just revisit that in case that was muddled for you. Our first and our last little parts of the, or little petals, only have two picots and three slip stitches beginning and end. And in the middle, we start with a pico and we do a pico every second stitch and we end with a slip stitch. There's a chain between them all. Obviously, it's all completely clear in your pattern, but that is what we have just worked. And when all your ends are sewn in, this is what you're finished with. So we work those picots on the wrong side of the work. So it gives this really pretty sort of ridge um, and it just looks beautiful, fluffy and gorgeous double carnation flowers.